Hi everyone and welcome to Book Boop. My name is Rachel and today I'm going to be doing another wrap up. Um, I haven't really been filming much at all, but I love getting to tell you all about the books that I've been reading and what I thought about them. I actually have 10 books to cover today. I'm going to do kind of rapid fire, try to keep this pretty quick. Some of them really weren't that memorable to me, so I won't have a whole lot to say about them. But I've got my Kindle this time so I can show you book covers. And I got my trusty little slip of paper that shows me what I rated them because I'm not going to remember all of them. So let's go ahead and jump in. So the first one I want to talk about today is Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. This is a novella and I really enjoyed this one a lot. I had heard nothing but good things. So this story is following a woman whose older sister has been married to married off to this prince who I can't remember if he's a king, became the king at this point, but he's a very cruel man. And his sister, her sister is just trapped in this awful, awful marriage. And she wants to do whatever she can to be able to rescue her sister. And there's certain trials and things she has to go through to be able to rescue her. It's very much a fantastical story. It feels sort of like a classic fairy tale. It definitely has some dark edges to it, like a grim fairy tale. But I really liked it a lot, even though it was dark, which I usually like darker tales. It had a lot of humor injected to it and a little bit of romance. And I honestly really enjoyed it a lot and I can see why people really like it. And I gave it 4.25 stars. So highly recommend. I am loving T. Kingfisher so far this year. So speaking of T. Kingfisher, um, I then immediately went to What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher, which is another novella. I adore this cover. It is so disturbing and creepy and I can't look away from it. It like makes me uncomfortable, but at the same time, I really, really like it. <laughs> and this book is supposed to be a retelling of The Fall of the House of Usher um, by Edgar Allan Poe, which I personally have never read. So I went into it not knowing the source material. I probably should have read it beforehand, but I haven't had a chance to read it. And I really liked this one a lot. If you like dark, gothic, spooky settings, this is definitely for you. I loved the spookiness of this. I loved the old manor house. I loved just the very, honestly, kind of like supernatural edge it had to it. And I just, I loved it. I thought it was really good. There is supposed to actually be another one coming out. So it's going to be like a little series. I don't know if it's just going to be a duology. I'm not really sure how I feel about there being another book because I felt like it closed up well. I felt like it was really great as it was. Um, so I'm not sure if I'll read the second one or not, but this was really, really good. And I gave it 4.5 stars. Yep, that's right. So I, I'm definitely loving T. Kingfisher. I'm trying to go through a lot more of their works because I am enjoying them immensely. I love the writing style. This next one was one that my husband actually picked for me. I've been wanting to read it for a long time and normally I would have only read this during spooky season in October, but my husband saw the cover and I was like, you should read that one next. So he picked Dark Harvest by Norman Partridge and I absolutely adore Halloween. I love spooky season. And so this screams spooky season, doesn't it? I mean, just look at that cover. Unfortunately, I did not like this one. So the premise of this story is that every year on Halloween night, boys in this, in this small town, I think it's 15 and up or is it 16 and up? Like from 16 to 18 are supposed to hunt this pumpkin boy. There's a pumpkin that grows in a field in this town that comes alive. It's like a scarecrow pumpkin and it comes alive on Halloween and the, a certain amount of boys are supposed to hunt down and kill this pumpkin. This pumpkin is also armed as well, like it's given a knife or an ax or something, some kind of weapon, and they have to like, the whole thing is which boy is gonna be the one to find and hunt down, and they're kind of like the ultimate winner for that year. But like the, the winning thing that you got if you were the one that were to stop the pumpkin boy is you got to leave town. I guess like you weren't allowed to leave this small town. So that was the premise of this story. The thing I really didn't like about it, and this may be kind of spoilery, so I apologize, but they never explained why this was something the town did. They hinted that they would. They kind of alluded to the idea, like, eventually we're going to tell you why the town's like this. Eventually we're going to tell you why they hunt down this pumpkin and how this pumpkin... They don't. They don't tell you why. Now you get more of the lore of who this, like, scarecrow pumpkin thing is and how it comes to life and... But they never explain why 
They don't explain why the town has this bizarre tradition. And that's what drove me crazy. I'm like, it just sort of left feeling, I don't know. It just, it felt pointless to me when I got to the end of it. I was like, well, if I don't know why they're doing this, then what's the point? It just, it felt like there was this overall mystery hanging over in the book that was never addressed and that drove me bonkers. So I ended up giving this one two stars, which I feel like is actually slightly generous to be perfectly honest, was not a fan. After that, I decided I wanted to read something really quick and easy. And this is something I'd had on my TBR cart for a while. And that is The Doll Graveyard by Lois Ruby. And I love reading spoof, spooky middle grades. I adore them. I this is These are the kind of books I grew up reading. I loved reading spooky middle grades. One of my favorites is called The Doll in the Garden by Mary Downing Hahn. Loved it. So this one very much looks like something I would really enjoy. Unfortunately, I really didn't like this book at all. And I feel really bad. I feel like I shouldn't have rated it because obviously it's not for me. I'm a 35, 34 year old woman. I'm almost 35. And this is, this is written for kids very much so. So I shouldn't be picking it apart so much, but I just felt like the story felt very disjointed. It was about this girl and her family, her, I think her mom, her older brother and her younger brother and her move into this really old house. Um, I think that her family owns, that her grandmother had passed away or her great aunt had passed away. See how much I remember about this book? It just has completely left me. I think it's her great aunt passed away, left this house to them. They end up moving into the house and there are these creepy dolls who are kind of coming to life that they keep moving around and doing spooky things. There's also some dolls that have been buried in the yard and are marked with grave markers. It's really weird. And on like just that premise, I was like, oh, that sounds nice and spooky. I like that. It it was just weird. It, it was the dolls were supposed to be kind of like reincarnations of different people that had lived in the home. And it was just it was a strange book. And I just it felt very disjointed. There were times where I would turn the page and the next sentence would feel so disjointed from whatever had happened just a page before that I would turn back and double check the page number to make sure I didn't skip a page. It just felt I don't know. I don't feel like it wasn't written very well. But again, this is for a very young middle grade, to be honest. So I ended up giving it 1.75 stars. Again, I feel bad I rated it. I probably shouldn't have rated it. But it just, I didn't really like it that much. All right. Next was another book my husband picked for me from my giant TBR list. And it is another middle grade. And it is A Wolf for a Spell by Kara Sutter. And it's a gorgeous cover. And I have been wanting to read this one for quite a while. And again, this is another one that just disappointed me. So this story is um, focused on Baba Yaga and also this little girl in the village who has been living in a orphanage and she's hoping, hoping for a better life. And Baba Yaga ends up switching bodies with a wolf. So a wolf ends up be inhabiting Baba Yaga's body and then Baba Yaga becomes the wolf because there's something she needs to be a wolf for. I don't know. It's very fantastical. It felt too long. I honestly don't remember much about it, to be perfectly honest. It was just okay. I gave it 2.75. I wasn't a big fan. I'm sorry I can't really give you much more information than that because I really don't remember. It's been a little bit since I've read it and I just don't remember a whole lot about it. It wasn't that memorable for me. All right, this next one. This one hurts to talk about. And you'll see why. Okay, I had purchased this book a while ago. It's A Peculiar Peril by Jeff Vandermeer. This thing is chonky. It is over 600 pages. I don't normally read books this big. It is, <laughs> this has a very strange premise. The, just, if you just read the description for it, it just sounds really quirky. Just like, oh, this sounds cool. It sounds like a quirky fantasy story. And if I can explain it the best that I can, it is following this young man, I think he's 15 or 16 years old, and his grandfather has passed away, and he is going to his grandfather's old manor home in England, I think, and he is spending the summer cataloging things that are in his grandfather's house. Apparently, if he takes the time to catalog things and organize things, then that is like his stipulation to own the manor for it to for him to inherit it. And his mother has gone missing like a year ago. So it's pretty much just him. 
some of his friends come with him from the boarding school that he goes to and they're cataloging this stuff and they start to realize that some of the things his grandfather has doesn't make sense and that there may actually be other worlds. It's kind of portal fantasy-ish, parallel universe-ish. This was by far one of the weirdest books I have ever read in my life. And it went on and on and on. And honestly, I read all of this and it felt pointless. <laughs> I got to the end of it and I was like, what was the point of this book? I don't understand what the point was. I felt like in all of this, not much happened. It was just really weird and I I didn't like it. And I know Jeff Vandermeer, I never read anything by Jeff Vandermeer before, I believe. And he's a very quirky writer. I think he's written a lot of sci-fi because I think he's the same person. What was the name of that book? I haven't read it. Um, but there's there's a very famous book, science fiction book, that's about like this very strange alien thing. I don't know. I'm blanking on the name of it. But this is a very popular author. And I, because I had purchased this, granted, I purchased this at a bottom of the barrel discount price. So I didn't pay very much for this book. But because I bought it, I was bound and determined to get my money's worth and to read it. If I had not purchased this, is it, this is something I had borrowed from the library, I would have definitely DNF'd it. Did not finish it. I would have dropped it like a hot potato. <laughs> I did not enjoy this book at all. What did I give it? Let's see, I gave it 1.5 stars and it was a huge waste of time, which is sad because the cover is beautiful, the description sounds intriguing. It's just weird. It was so weird. It was like screwed up Narnia or something. I don't know, was not a fan, didn't like it. All right, next off, let's see, what do we got next? Next is one I have had on my TBR for an extremely long time. And I read this on my Kindle and it is called Ruined by Paula Morris. The description of it or like the really quick snapshot description of it was Twilight meets ghosts in New Orleans, which I don't think that really matches the description. So we are, we are following this teenage girl and she is going and living with her, she calls her aunt She's more like a godmother kind of person. She's not technically related to her, but she goes to live with her aunt and her cousin in New Orleans for a chunk of time during the school year. So we're following her. She's in New Orleans, completely different type of place than where she's currently been living with her dad. She's starting at a new school, all this kind of stuff. She's, she's going through like the whole new school thing. And she lives near a old cemetery and she ends up seeing things in the cemetery and a whole mystery unfolds around um, some of the old manors in New Orleans, a lot of the centers around Mardi Gras and all those kind of things. And I, I like, I love things being in New Orleans. I've never personally been there, but it's a very fascinating place. There's a lot of mystery. There's a lot of paranormal type of things. Lots of really cool um, cemeteries in New Orleans. There's lots of really great opportunities to have amazing things happen in sort of this setting. And I, it was okay. I didn't absolutely hate it, but I didn't love it either. It wasn't terribly memorable for me. I know this is a series or at least a duology. I don't think I'm going to continue the series necessarily. I felt like it had a good mystery to it. It was less romancy than I thought it would be, which is good. I was expecting it to be kind of angsty, especially since they had like mentioned the word twilight with it. So I expected it to be kind of like angsty, will they, won't they, maybe love triangle. I don't know. Thankfully, it was not like that. They had a little bit of romance, but that wasn't the main focus, which I really appreciated. Um, but it's definitely very high school drama-y, very like, oh, the mean girl's being mean to me because I'm new. And I don't know. It's It's got that kind of like teen angst for sure. Um, I ended up giving it 3.5 stars. Again, didn't hate it, didn't necessarily love it. I'm not going to continue the series, but I'm glad I finally got to it because I've had it on my TBR for an extremely long time. Um, this next one, I was excited to read. It just, I was flipping through just page after page on Goodreads just to see like, what do I feel like we're reading? And I saw the cover for this one and I was like, it's time. I feel like I want to read this one. And that's A Forgery of Roses by Jessica S. Olson. Um, this is a relatively new book. I feel like it came out last year and the premise for it sounded really cool. Um, it kind of reminds me of um, an old classic that I'm blanking on all of a sudden. Um, it's reminding me of the classic 
of the man who portrait of Dorian Gray Dorian Gray that's what it is it reminds me of Dorian Gray so it's following this this type of world where there are people who are able to paint and have magical powers with them and able to alter things with people. For example, um, you could paint a portrait of someone as they are and then you could lay over it, maybe change their eye color or lay over it like changing features and it will actually change the features of the subject that you're painting. And that sounded really, really cool. What I really liked about this though is that in the description of the book, it talked about there was this family and being one of these painters is kind of illegal. People would look badly upon these people. They feel like it's going against God and all this kind of stuff, being able to alter people's appearances. But this rich family, their son ends up dying in a tragic accident and they hire this girl who has this ability to alter people with painting and they want to see if they if she can not only alter their son, but if she's actually able to paint him back to life, which sounds so cool. I was like, oh, that sounds so like dark and spooky. And it just, it had like that gothic feel to it. And I really enjoyed it a lot. It had some romance in it that I wasn't expecting that I felt like was written well and I enjoyed. There was way more in-depth mystery in it. I mean, the description I just gave you, which is the description of the book, I'm not spoiling anything with that, but it goes beyond that. It's not just like, oh, that's the premise of the book and that's what we're sticking with. Yes, that's where we start, but there's way more to the story. It, it's, it's just much more in-depth plot than I expected from the description that I got. A lot more character, character development than I expected. It was just really good. I enjoyed it a lot. There were parts that made me laugh. There were parts that made me feel kind of like spooked a little bit. There are parts that kind of, you know, made my heart pitter patter a little bit. There was just really good moments in this book and I really enjoyed it a lot. I gave it 4.25 stars. So I highly recommend this one. It was a lot of fun. Um, I feel like it would be really great to read during the fall or winter. It definitely has that feel to it. It's got that dark, gothic, old manner vibe to it. So if you, if you're in the mood for that, go for it. Then randomly, I was just hanging out at the library with my daughter, um, picking out some books from her for her to read for like the summer reading challenge. And I randomly saw this graphic novel on the shelf and I was like, oh, this looks so cute. And it's called Beetle and the Hollow Bones by Eliza Lane. And look at that cover, it's so adorable. I loved this so much. The premise of this story is we are following this goblin here and she is sort of like an amateur witch. She's trying to learn how to use her magic and she loves hanging out at the nearby mall. And at this mall, she has befriended a ghost that haunts the mall. And the mall itself is going to be closing down. They're going to demolish it. But the ghost, her ghost friend, is not able to leave the mall. And so it kind of goes with this mystery of like, how can she save her friend and basically un unattach her ghost friend from this specific spot so that they, this ghost doesn't get trapped in just sort of this decimated spot because it's just been haunting them all. And it's so cute. <laughs> it was so adorable. I love the art style. It's a very colorful. The whole thing is very bright and colorful like this. Very similar tones, lots of purples and oranges. And it was just it's definitely very, has a very like, again, October Halloween feel. You can kind of tell from the cover of it, but it was so much fun. I enjoyed it a lot. It was super cute, really quick read, and I gave it 4.5 stars. So it was a fun time. Highly recommend. If you just want a quick little read. All right, this very last book I'm going to talk about, I don't know. I still don't know how I feel about it. I finally read Gone Girl by Gillian, Gillian Flynn. I've had this on my TBR cart for quite a while. I was just randomly given it by a friend at book club and it wasn't something I had initially sought out to read but it was given to me and I'm like oh it's a really good thriller. I'd heard about it. Thankfully I hadn't heard any spoilers about it. There is a movie adaptation of this book that I have not seen and I hadn't heard enough about this story to have been spoiled for anything. If you haven't heard of Gone Girl before it is about this woman who on her fifth wedding anniversary disappears and it looks like there were signs of a struggle and she's just gone and the police as you would 
kind of guess the main suspect a lot of people end up focusing on the husband and thinking that the husband has done something to his wife and so you're going through this story honestly following you're following the perspective of the husband and then you're also kind of jumping back and forth between the perspective of the husband and some flashbacks with the wife and you're just trying to figure out what's going on is did the husband really do it did he harm his wife did somebody else do it what's going on and this it was twisty it was really twisty um you get about halfway through and all of a sudden the whole book just feels like it's flipped on its head the whole story um and it gets weird it gets weird it gets crazy it was fast paced i had a good time with it i get what did i give it i gave it 4.25 i I think the reason it wasn't like a five star for me is because of the ending. And I'm not going to spoil the ending. I just didn't particularly like the way it ended. I'm not saying it's a bad ending. It's not a bad ending. It's, it's, it's a well-written ending for sure. But I didn't like it. I didn't like the way it ended. It made me frustrated. <laughs> and so because of that, I felt like I couldn't give it a higher rating because I was just felt frustrated at the end. I didn't feel... Not that, I mean, thrillers aren't necessarily supposed to end all, you know, yay, happy, everybody's happy. You know, it's not supposed to end like that. It normally doesn't. But it just, just the ending of it just wasn't satisfying to me. It just didn't hit quite where I wanted it to hit at the end. Um, it did personally feel a little bit long. Um, the font is really tiny. <laughs> I'm used to reading like, I'm used to reading usually middle grades and young adult books. And even honestly, adult books that have larger font and this font was tiny. It felt like it took me a long time to read, but it held my attention and I enjoyed it. I thought it was a really good thriller. It's really well, well written. So I would say if you haven't read this and you haven't been spoiled for it, it's a fun ride. And I, I do, I do think it's worth reading. It was a good time. I'm glad I read it. Um, it was a it was a solid thriller. I feel like it still holds up. I know this is sort of like a thriller that has kind of stood the test of time where like people still talk about this one. So and I feel like it still holds up for sure. I feel like it didn't necessarily have anything in it that I was like, oh, this feels like something else I've read. It felt like it still stands up on its own. So 4.25, not bad at all. So those are the 10 books I have read recently. And it's been fun. I've been reading some good books, some stinkers, but I've been reading a really good variety of books and I've been really enjoying what I've been reading. Still been reading a lot. I'm sorry I haven't been filming a whole bunch. I keep telling myself I'm going to. I really want to film vlogs. It doesn't seem to end up happening. And it's going to be hard for me to film during the summer because this is the first summer where my daughter is out of school and not in some kind of like daycare. So she's with me and around me a lot. So trying to vlog and film, I don't really want her on camera and posting her online. That's just not something I wanna do. Um, so I probably still won't be filming a whole lot, but at least I can do some wrap ups here and there. Just at least tell you what I've been reading. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these, what you think about them. Um, and I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you watching this video. Um, if you liked this video, you can watch another one. I have a suggestion, I think, over here. And then over here is my logo if you would <laughs> like to subscribe to my channel, even though I apparently rarely ever post. So apologies about that, but I'm still alive, I'm still here, and I'm still reading. So thank you so much for watching. You rock, and don't forget to keep reading, okay? Bye.